Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to this show. Welcome to Zero Density Booth. I'm really excited to be here. We'll talk about uh, XR production and AR for eSports and our case study with Riot Games and with Zero Density. So a bit about us. Uh, we are a company that uh, is based on three main principles. Uh, the first one is creativity. Uh, creativity is the base for everything that we try to do, trying to do it uniquely and differently. The second aspect is technology. Uh, and technology drives us, excites us, and makes really something different about all the experiences we're trying to provide our customers and to the end users. And the third one, not less important, is workflow. And workflow is part of it, our DNA. Because basically, basically, you need to be able to use the technology in order to support the production uh, and not make it difficult to them. So a bit about Riot. Before we start, I want to showcase about what we did. Uh, this was a project that was implemented uh, last year. Uh, can we show the video, please? So here, what we did is we created a complete environment combined between virtual, real, extended, augmented. Uh, we will see different aspects. Uh, we work here with several LED walls, a total of seven LED walls in the venue, all driven by zero density engines. We had different type of camera tracking. We had also object tracking in the venue and all supporting uh, the League of Legends finals in Mexico. So talking about the, the venue and the experience, it was COVID time. People weren't able to go to the venue, so the final had to be different. So we had to do something that would surprise the audiences. So what we did is basically created an environment that goes beyond the physical environment that they had in the cinema that we're seeing there. We'll talk a bit about that. And the idea was to expand the world uh, beyond that physical uh, element and take it somewhere else. Uh, we're a League of Legends. It's a game that has been in the market for many, many years. So we took it to year 2099, where it still was part of the city. The second example that we're seeing here is exactly the same setup, but it was used uh, for Valorant. So we used a completely different implementation, but with exactly the same technical setup in order to make it a completely different experience. And here, uh, we use uh, elements like portal windows, virtual characters from Valorant game that come on to live from the virtual screen, run into the real environment, and interact with the talents uh, on the show. So let's try to understand what's the process of creating something like this behind this. And I'm not taking any credit on this. This is our creative team who did all the work. But the idea behind this was actually to have a physical venue, a real venue, where the players are, and to be able to zoom out to an imaginary world where we can, we can interact with graphics, with characters, with information, with data, with everything. So let's on and see some slides. At the beginning, we weren't able to be physical in the venue because of COVID. So we had to model the entire venue into 3D in order to see how it would look like. And then we created, by drawing first, all the city around it and how it would look. Let's go on. And so let's see some of the elements that we were creating there. So first of all was the elevator. So the idea is we had that cinema venue uh, that actually need to be in a world where we can actually go up and down. So the idea was to have this venue on a lift, so it go, it's able actually to go up into the skyline, down, and get different perspective. And then we had the video walls that you can see part of them there, 
which we had to fill with the skyline of the city with elements, but they had to interact through the camera tracking. So we would have a complete XR environment. Um, we had also to create some things that are unique. So we worked a little about uh, foot tracks, foot tracks that represent different countries that are part of this uh, League of Legends. And then you can see them integrated and modeled in 3D into this real world. And then we had to create different corners in the city where we can show different type of information, show stats, head to head, real time data that we're gathering from the game and being able to exhibit. And of course, an important part of this is also sponsors. Uh, it's all about monetizing the content. So the idea was also to be able to integrate different type of sponsors into the content and be able to monetize. And here we're seeing some simulation of the 3D world that we created because we weren't able to go to the venue physically. So we wanted to affect the, with virtual lights, the real environment, and vice versa. And we'll talk a bit about it later. And of course, Riot has to be there with a good branding and a good presence. So we created for them the Riot store uh, with all the t-shirts of the teams that were participating, uh, et cetera. So let's talk a bit about the technology and how we implemented this. So first of all, we had one crane uh, with tracking. It was a 18-foot crane uh, that had an easy track system installed uh, on it. We had two PTZ uh, Sony cameras, which were BRC X1000, that were located in two different type of the venue. We had other cameras that were located on the uh, venue that we had to integrate them, but without having actually tracking on them. So that's something that was also a consideration. We had object tracking. We want to track the trophy uh, in the event when the winner team was going to lift up that trophy. So we had some object tracking as well. We had a total of seven LED walls of different type of resolutions. Um, so we had different type of LED walls, di different pixel pitch on a few of them, and then we had to combine all of them together. We had the server room with five zero density engines, uh, some of them applying or outputting more than one output, and one control room for remote control. So that's based on the technology. Now the LED screen up, uh, screen setup. We had a total of seven uh, LED walls. We had four reality engines that were able to show multiple output from different perspectives depending on the camera that is being switched. We had the portal window effect, where you saw actually uh, the characters from Valorant jumping out from the video into the real uh, set. And we also developed a, a specific plugin that will allow us to connect to the switcher that was on the set. So when we were switching cameras, the, cam the background in the video wall was switching accordingly in real time. So regarding the camera tracking, we used uh, EasyTrack for the camera tracking on the crane. You're welcome to see after that the EasyTrack system here in the booth. We use the same system also for object tracking. And we use also uh, the uh, EasyTrack system to manage the PTZ tracking and to be able to broadcast that information into multiple uh, render engines. And here you can see the setup on the crane with our tracking device. Um, and you can see also how we were able to remotely uh, manage the tracking from an iPad if it was necessary. Regarding the object tracking, we put an object tracker on the trophy. Uh, so once the team lifted the trophy, we were able to track and create a nice effect around it. Uh, and this was used by one easy track hub and with an one anti-latency system. And finally, here we see also how we multiply the stream from several PTZs 
a Sony PTZ camera into multiple render engines. Now, a very important factor when you do AR is to be able to affect with virtual lights the real environment, but also how do you affect with real light the virtual environment. So here, what we did is basically we replicated uh, the lighting schema that we had in the venue into Unreal uh, Engine. And within zero density, we were able to control the lights and get affected from the real lights and the virtual lights on the, on the real venue. Um, so we used the MX protocol in order to intercommunicate with the lighting system and the console. Uh, so we were able to affect both during all the time. And when you have this type of integration, uh, the effect, the visual effect, uh, and the integration is amazing. And that's a key factor when you're trying to do uh, AR in this type of things. So what is next? Uh, we have a lot of things coming on. Um, the first thing is we are excited to launch here during NAB our new EasyTrack uh, box uh, with uh, our special SWAN tracker. And another aspect of it is uh, how we can democratize virtual production. And for those who have done uh, virtual production, lens calibration and lens profiling is a key factor of it. So we created the virtual, uh, the, the easy profile uh, lens calibration tool that is being launched here in NAB. And last, I want to just uh, give you a short highlight of what's coming on. We're launching together with Boombox and ESC. ESC the, is the e-scooter championship, a new championship that is, will air on uh, May this year uh, that is all about sustainable environment, sustainable cities. Uh, and this is something where we are going to combine again a unique virtual world together with augmented reality. And this is coming up in Europe, in London, in this uh, next two weeks. So we're really excited about that. Thank you very much for everybody, and have a great show.